In my last video, which was on stroke, I got two good comments. One asking me to do a video on multiple sclerosis, the other asking about the significance of some funny spots seen on an MRI scan of their brain. I'm going to address both topics in this video. Hello, I'm John Foster. I'm a medical doctor who does social security disability exams. I've done over 1,500. And as usual, everything I say reflects my own opinions based on my own experience and study and not the opinions of the Social Security Administration or any other medical body. Now, like with stroke, many people with multiple sclerosis are quite disabled and will be approved for disability by Social Security, but not all. Multiple sclerosis and stroke are not conditions where the diagnosis alone gets you approved. You have to prove that you have limitations of work-related abilities. Stroke will hit one area of the brain. Multiple sclerosis can hit multiple areas of the brain and spinal cord seemingly at random, making it even more complex than stroke. In multiple sclerosis, the body's immune system attacks the insulation of the wires that connect the brain and spinal cord cells. That insulation is called myelin and the wires are called axons. We don't know what causes multiple sclerosis and there is no cure, but there are some treatments that can help. Multiple sclerosis tends to hit a younger population than stroke, tending to affect people between ages of 20 to 50, and female to male is 2 to 1. Also, the farther you are from the equator, either in the northern or southern hemisphere, the higher the risk of multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis can follow one of four patterns. There can be one attack that clears up and then the condition never comes back again. There can be one attack that clears up and then a second attack that clears up and such, so on and so forth. Or there can be one attack that only partially clears up and then a second attack that only partially clears up, and with each attack, the person be can become more and more impaired and disabled. And finally, the worst type is where there's an attack and things just go steadily downhill from there. There's never a period of improvement, and that tends to be the worst and most disabling form of multiple sclerosis. And there are about a million people in the United States t with multiple sclerosis today. And if you're finding this video helpful, I'd ask that you might want to subscribe. Now, the most common early symptom of multiple sclerosis is loss of vision in one eye, which may or may not be painful. And typically, when the doctor examines the eye, the doctor can't see anything wrong. So we have a saying, the patient sees nothing and the doctor sees nothing. That's in dis a distinct difference from most other cases of sudden loss of vision in one eye, where it's usually obvious that the eye is dise diseased. Multiple sclerosis can affect the person physically, neurocognitively, which means affecting their ability to think and remember, and psychiatrically, and most commonly, that manifests as depression. Common manifestations of multiple sclerosis are loss of vision, double vision, Fatigue, which often gets worse if the patient is warm, such as taking a hot bath. Muscle weakness, loss of sensation or numbness, what doctors call paresthesias, which are funny feelings like tingling, electric shock-like feelings, or vibrating feelings. 
loss of coordination, difficulty processing information, and depression. Another problem that may appear in mus multiple sclerosis is called Lermite sign, and that's where moving the head can cause a feeling of an electric shock running down the spine. Now to diagnose multiple sclerosis, usually the person needs to see a neurologist, a brain and nervous system specialist, have an MRI of their brain and sometimes the spinal cord, which will show spots of disease affecting the myelin in the brain or spinal cord and also a lumbar puncture, also known as a spinal tap. Now, when I did emergency medicine, I did a lot of spinal taps, and every single person I talked to was terrified and thought that they, it would be awful. And I explained that in a spinal tap, the doctor uses a needle no bigger than the needle used to take blood from your elbow, and instead of putting it in the elbow, puts it in the back and removes a couple of tubes of the clear watery fluid called cerebrospinal fluid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. And the doctor injects the area with lidocaine or novocaine so it's numb before putting the needle in. And every single person I did a spinal tap on, without exception, when I was done, said it wasn't as bad as they thought it would be. So don't be terrified if you're told that you ought to have a spinal tap. Now, there are several medicines that can be used to treat multiple sclerosis. Steroids such as prednisone or methylprednisolone are often used for acute attacks. And then for chronic multiple sclerosis, it can be interferons or glutiramer acetate. I'd like to talk just briefly about quacks and multiple sclerosis. The fact that multiple sclerosis often comes and goes at random makes patients prime targets for quacks because the quack can sell them any sort of fake remedy and some people will get better and then they'll tell all their friends often on internet forums and then the quack makes a fortune selling useless medication. So beware of quacks if you have multiple sclerosis. Finally, I want to talk about funny spots on images of the brain. And since we do so many imaging studies of the brain, either with MRI or CT scan these days, we're finding lots of scans that have funny little spots in people who feel completely well and have no symptoms. Now, if you have spots on the brain and you have symptoms related to the nervous system, like trouble with your vision or dizziness or numbness or muscle weakness or clumsiness, you should see a neurologist. However, if you have no symptoms, it's really difficult to know what to do. Some of those spots could represent serious problems, such as small strokes, or multiple sclerosis, or even a cancer known as lymphoma. Some people with migraines get funny spots in their brain, and a lot of people with funny spots never turn out to have any disease whatsoever. So my advice is, it's best to reduce your risk of anything that might damage your brain, such as smoking, heavy drinking, uncontrolled high blood pressure, uncontrolled diabetes, or uncontrolled high cholesterol. And then don't panic, just see how it goes. And if you ever get any symptoms related to the brain, see a neurologist, but understand that the odds are that it's simply something that's just normal and not to be worried about. Well, I hope this has been helpful, and as always, remember, if it happens, it's possible.